This has actually been on my radar now for several months. And then just last week, I ran across this article on usnews.com about yet more people that are leaving full-time RV living in exchange for part-time RVing. So I thought it was time to do a video update and break down why and what it is that causes people to leave the full-time RV lifestyle and why moreover, maybe a full-time lifestyle of RV living just isn't sustainable for most people is a long-term living situation. So buckle up. I think you're gonna be surprised about why now even more people are quitting full-time RV life. So it's been absolutely fascinating to me the sheer number of individuals and families that have migrated from nomadic freedom of full-time RV life back to a more traditional stationary lifestyle of sticks and bricks homes. Now, I, for one, think that this transition speaks volumes just about human nature in general and our needs and really what true home and happiness are. And we'll get to that in just a few minutes. But for years, the allure of the open road has captivated many people, us included in that. And the RV lifestyle that promises freedom and adventure and an escape from the mundane. And in many ways, it does truly fulfill on these types of promises. However, social media has really glorified this nomadic way of life, presenting it as the ultimate solution to the confines of societal norms and the conventional nine to five grind. Yet, <laughs> despite the charms and genuine satisfaction that it does and has brought to many, a significant number of RV enthusiasts are returning to choose to a hybrid or part-time RV lifestyle and set up some sort of stationary home base. So why is this happening? Well, one reason is really just the yearning for community and deeper connections. Now, while the RV community is incredibly supportive and you guys can leave us a comment and just let us know how supportive you have found this community to be. It is possible to find that community while you're on the road, but it's kind of more of like a meetup every once in a while kind of thing. And very rarely does it work that you actually find another family or couple that wants to go to all of the same places, all of the same time, and that you just link arms together and travel everywhere together. <laughs> Doesn't usually happen that way. And while community on the road is possible, it's just not the same is being part of a social group on a regular basis. For example, one thing I know I really missed during our time of full-time RVing was things like my mom's groups or my Bible study groups, just where I had that same group of people that I would see and get together with every single week. The transient nature of the RV lifestyle can really make it difficult to establish and maintain those types of long-term relationships. And because we as human beings are inherently social beings, the lack of that stable, ongoing community interactions can really lead to a lot of feelings of isolation and loneliness, and that takes a toll on mental and emotional health or some. I mean, they're saying right now that loneliness is like the new like health crisis. So it's super important to just be connected with others. And returning to a stationary home allows for people to re-engage with those communities and build lasting friendships, participate in local activities and traditions that are sometimes really difficult to try to do from the road. I mean, I can't tell you how many times we've been in an area and found out, oh, there's a special event or like community barbecue that's gonna be taking place the day after that we're scheduled to depart. <laughs> so then you have the challenge of living in a confined space. Now, despite the freedom to travel anywhere, the physical reality of living in an RV is a life of minimalism and tight quarters. And this can be more of a challenge for some, depending upon your family size. And so most people don't really realize the impact that this really truly has on the quality of day-to-day -day life. I mean, the challenges of limited privacy, storage, personal space can and do start to take a toll over time. I mean, trust me, I am speaking from experience here. And most families realize either they need something that's like bigger, like a larger RV with a more family-friendly layout. And then that has challenges in and of itself because then you need a larger truck to pull it. And there's a reduced number of campsites that can actually accommodate an RV that's 42 to 45 feet in length. Or some just opt for the more spacious and more permanent living environment like a sticks and bricks home. Now, another reason for this exodus from full-time RV life is the logistics of maintenance and RV living can be flat out overwhelming. Now, contrary to the idyllic images often portrayed on social media, life on the road is a constant 
maintenance and repairs, repairs and maintenance, dealing with mechanical issues, managing waste, water resources, all of these challenges coupled with the task of finding campgrounds or public land to park on and stay really does take a toll and it becomes stressful. And speaking of the challenges in finding a campground or a place to stay, this can be a problem for all RVers. Now, whether you're full-time or part-time, and this is why we have and do love to partner with a service that we found about a year ago called RV, which is the sponsor of this video. Now, not only is RV a time saver when you're looking for those campgrounds, but picking up cancellations when campgrounds are sold out is one of my favorite ways that I use RV. Now, I've scored reservations due to cancellations at several top-rated state parks during peak seasons. So now think about it. In most situations, you have to plan months in advance to get reservations at some of the bus campgrounds and many people have already made reservations well in advance, but we know plans can and do change. And as a result, there's dozens of campground cancellations that really do happen on the daily. So when I have a sold out search set up in RV, I have RV not only notify me, but actually book that for me if and when it becomes available. And that's why I love using RV versus other just kind of alert services because RV will auto book that site as soon as it becomes available. You can give RV a try for free at gratefulglamper.com forward slash RV. And if you decide that you wanna get started with using RV to make those reservations, we've partnered with RV for an exclusive 10% discount off the membership options. The details will all be in the description below, or you can visit gratefulglamper.com forward slash RV to learn more. And a huge thanks to RV for their support of this channel and sponsoring this video. So now another factor why people are opting for part-time versus full-time RV life is because some sort of home situation and the financial implications of full-time RVing. Now, let's just explain this a little bit. I know many of you are thinking, wait a minute, isn't full-time RV life supposed to be cheaper? Now, while RV living can be cost-effective in some aspects, it often involves a lot of hidden expenses. That's gonna be about a thousand. A thousand? Yep, a thousand. You have campsite fees or you don't wanna do that, then you're gonna have memberships for your campground stays, fuel costs, maintenance, repairs, the list really truly does go on. And then if you're needing to work from the road, the need for consistent and reliable internet access can literally be a major cost. Did you know Starlink, which is great, still costs just under two grand a year just for your Starlink? And another financial thought to consider is not having an appreciating asset such as some sort of house or piece of real estate, and instead a depreciating asset like an RV. In this article, I recently read from Liz Broomer Smith, the YouTuber behind the channel Eat CRV. She wrote, we were ready to buy a home in 2023 and thankfully in the financial position to afford it. However, looking back on our journey into RVing, I wish we would have purchased a home before we transitioned to RV life. If we had purchased a house in 2017 and rented it out while we were gone, we could have bought at a much lower price and mortgage rate, making home ownership far more affordable than it is today. We also would have had equity to tap into when buying a different home or better transition our lives when we were ready to settle down again. So you can see the financial unpredictability and then implications of selling it all to go full-time RV living. It's definitely a reason many turn back to a more traditional living arrangement where expenses can be more fixed, predictable, and you have that appreciating asset. Now, one of the largest reasons that we have cut back on some of our travel recently is a change in personal and family priorities. Life circumstances such as our kids who will both be freshmen in high school in the fall, and their desire for a more traditional high school experience. For our family and many others that we know, there are experiences that just cannot happen on the road. I mean, on the road experiences are great, but things like participating in youth athletics, clubs like Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts, or even a part-time summer job for teens just isn't gonna happen when you're moving from place to place every two weeks. And for some, the desire to maybe start a family or health issues or just the need for stability and routine can shift priorities. So the big thing to remember is this, full-time RV life for the majority is a season of life. Just like there's other seasons of life in many other aspects, seasons do and will change and different things are necessary to thrive in different seasons. 
And the journey from home life to RV living and then maybe back to a traditional home is just a reflection of the complex nature of just really human desires and our core needs as human beings. And it underscores the importance of flexibility in the pursuit of happiness and fulfillment. Now this transition really just reminds us that a home is not just a physical space, but home is really just a reflection of our needs and our values and those connections that we have with others. Now there's one more thing you have to understand about this lifestyle, and that is the cyclical nature of it. And to learn more about that, you can watch this video right up here.